Harris Middle School. Um, some of you may have older children who have attended our school before or are currently students here. And some of you may uh, have your oldest child in fifth grade now, and this is your first um, exposure to our school. Harris Middle School is a wonderful place. I am finishing my second year here. Mr. Hubbard is also finishing his second year. And Ms. Horton was born in Harris Middle School, and she has spent her entire life here. Uh, Ms. Horton has been here for more than 25 years, and she served as a guidance counselor here and the director of guidance before becoming the assistant principal a few years ago. So Herrick's Middle School, as you, as you probably know, is a, is a great for, uh, school for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. It's the shortest time in any of our schools that your child will have, but more will happen in these three years than in any time since they were infants. Um, the changes that take place here on an academic and a, a social emotional and, and in a physical level are extraordinary. If you see our sixth graders walking through the door uh, in September of their first year, they look incredibly different than when they walk out the door and normally would walk across the Tillis Center stage in, in June of their eighth grade year. So a couple of things about tonight's program. I'm going to start and go through some of our um, vision and, and mission statement and also talk about our instructional program. And then we'll transition and Mr. Hubbard will speak about grading and about student life and some of the activities that will be available to your children as middle school students. And then Ms. Horton will discuss uh, a lot of the social emotional aspects of middle school and talk about what it's like to parent a middle school child, which um, Ms. Horton has five children. Mr. Hubbard has four and I am a slacker and I only have three, but, um, I have a middle school child right now, and next year I will have two middle school children because I have a fifth grader who is moving to sixth, and I have a seventh grader moving to eighth. And Ms. Horton has had three children go through middle school. Um, Mr. Hubbard, his children are tearing apart the elementary schools of Garden City, so he has a few years. But um, so that's our program for tonight, how we're going to spend the next hour, I guess, together. I wanna start also with talking about our core values. In, in middle school, uh, particularly our middle school, we, we really want to teach our young people to be responsible adults, young adults, um, and to develop some of the decision-making skills that they will need as they move forward into high school and beyond. So we really shape our school culture and our community around our core values of the three R's, respect, responsibility, and readiness. We really believe that respect is the basis of all things we do in, in our school. And um, you know, we treat all members of our community with respect and we expect that same thing from our students. So respect is, is the foundation for all we do. Responsibility, as, as our children are getting older and now that they are moving into middle school, one of the things that comes with middle school is there's a lot of independence a lot more than they are accustomed to. And with that, we try to help our students understand the responsibilities that come with some of those new found uh, independences. So uh, that's a big part of our school and the three years they spend with us. And the last thing is readiness. We want our students to be prepared, prepared for their academics, but prepared for the social uh, situations they're going to face. A lot of children, as they um, navigate adolescents and become young adults will be faced with many, many choices and decisions. And we want to give them the skills and the tools that are necessary for them to be successful in those situations. So respect, responsibility, and readiness are the essential core values of Herrick's Middle School. We also have a mission statement that, you know, I, I really think speaks to the kind of school we want to be and, and we strive to have our students be a part of. And our mission statement is to provide a rigorous and relevant educational experience for all students that enhances and grows their intellectual, emotional, and social abilities in a safe and nurturing environment. So, you know, a couple of things I'd want to focus on here. Um, we want this to be for all students. You know, we believe in equity. We believe in um, supporting every child where they are. Um, children grow at different paces. Children learn at different rates. And it is our job as educators to support them where they are and to help them to go where they want to be and where they need to be. 
So we, we focus our attention on all students and we differentiate in, in the way in which we address those needs. We also wanna see a well-rounded child. Part of our middle school is focused on not just the academic. Yes, we are a very strong academic school. We are part of an outstanding academic district, but it's not just the intellectual piece. We have, obviously that's a, a large component, but we have a, a lot of emphasis placed upon emotional and, social, emotional and social skills as well. We provide a lot of opportunities for our children to grow in those areas. And finally, we wanna do it in a safe and nurturing environment. One of the most important things we feel is for students to come to a school where they feel valued, where they feel safe, where they feel they are connected to adults, where they are connected to their fellow students, and where they feel they are contributing. And that is the big piece of this. And I think if students feel good about the school that they're going to, they will be successful. You know, and in, in, in regards to the intellectual and the academic component, um, we are fortunate that next year we will be starting a new um, enhanced middle school schedule. A lot of effort has gone into this schedule over the past few years, and we are really, really excited for the changes that uh, are in store for your children come September. I want to start by, you know, explaining the, the classes that sixth graders take. So we have a nine period day. Lunch and recess is one of those periods, so our students are in class for eight academic periods each and every day. Um, those periods range between 43 and 44 minutes. The core subjects are the ones they have every day. And in sixth grade, our students take English language arts and math for one and a half periods. What that means is they will have a double period every other day in ELA and a double period every other day in math. And your ELA and math periods are back to back. So on, we have blue and silver days. On blue days, a child will have two periods of ELA and one period of math. And on silver days, they would have one period of ELA and two periods of math. In addition, science and social studies are their other core academic subjects. And those are one period every day. The core subjects are also grouped by teams. That's something that we have brought back to Herrick's Middle School starting next year. And what that means is that students will be divided into four teams, the blue, red, green, and orange teams. Each one of those teams will share the same core subject teachers. That provides a community within our grade that helps our students transition and to, and to flourish on a social level. It also provides our teachers with um, a team approach to supporting the academic needs of your child. And it helps parents because all of the um, core academic teachers all support your child and therefore conversations are more holistic. So your child in, sep in September, well really you'll, you'll receive your schedule in late August, will be assigned to an academic team. Then we have our additional subjects that are outside of the core academic teams. These are classes that are not teamed and they also do not meet every day in sixth grade. For the first time, your child will be taking world language. Um, world language, we offer four of them, Spanish, French, Italian, and Chinese. And world language meets every other day. In addition, we have a music program that is, as many of you know, outstanding. We offer sixth grade orchestra, band, chorus, and general music. So there are four options for sixth grade music, the three performance groups, and if you're not in a performance group, we have an outstanding general music program as well. Physical education is something that students take every other day as well. It's a great opportunity for our students to take care of themselves physically, and um, you know, it's, it's often many kids' favorite part of the day. And lastly, we have a flex period. A flex period is another period that meets every other day. And a flex is an opportunity for students to get enrichment opportunities or support classes. So um, students who receive services, that's an opportunity and that's a spot where they will receive their services so that they don't miss some of their other classes. And students who do not take support classes, that's an opportunity for them to have some enrichment opportunities as well with their sixth grade teachers. So flex is something that is like its, its name, flexible. 
And we also have what we call the bundle. And we refer to it now as the half bundle because health, art, family, and consumer science and technology uh, are things that students take for a quarter of the year. So in the first half of the year, for uh, example, students would take health on blue days and art on silver days. In the second half of the year, they would take family and consumer science on blue days and technology on silver days. Family consumer science is another name for home and careers, or what some of us may have known as home ec back in the day. But um, these are really great opportunities outside of the traditional classroom for students to explore their interests, to learn things that are very valuable to them. And we're very, very excited. Um, next year, we have expanded our bundle program and um, health, art, family, consumer science, and technology will be a big part of your child's day. Another big change for next year that we're excited about is for the first time, we are having a 44 minute lunch and recess period. Um, many of you may have heard that, and if you have older children, you've experienced the fact that the middle school, we have a 22 minute lunch currently. Um, that is a function of the schedule that we have. And uh, we felt that as a school, we wanted to support our students and provide them with opportunities to do things at lunch that will give them a, a break to allow them to socialize, to allow them to seek assistance if so needed. So all of our sixth grade students will have their lunch and recess during period five. That means at 1057 um, through 1141, all the sixth graders will not be in academic classes. They will be in lunch or recess. Our cafeteria does not hold our entire grade. So we will have half of the grade have lunch first and recess second, and then the other half will have recess first and lunch second. So they'll spend 22 minutes in the cafeteria eating lunch. We have hot and cold lunch lines, and we have a very strong snack selection, which um, I know I'm a big fan of, and I, I've worked at other schools. We have some of the best snacks around. I, I highly recommend Pop-Tarts. Um, in addition to the lunch part of that period, the other 22 minutes are for recess. So we will have opportunities for students to go outdoors, weather permitting. And when the weather is uh, not cooperating, we do not have any physical education classes scheduled during our lunch period so that we can use the gymnasium for um, recreation and recess. In addition, we'll have our library open and our computer room open at lunch for students to do work or play games if that's what they so choose. Um, we also will use this recess period for extra help opportunities and for students to check in with a teacher or a counselor if they need to. So um, we really are excited to offer this expanded lunch and recess period. We think it's really going to be a great addition to our school um, moving forward. This is what a typical grade six student schedule will look like next year. Um, so you'll see at the top, those are periods one through nine, and those are our start times and end times. Students have a four minute passing. So we'll start at 7.45 in the morning. That's the late bell. So students should be in their classrooms by 7.45. Um, there are bells that ring a few minutes earlier to alert them that it's time to move to their classroom. But the expectation is that at 7.45, students will be in their classrooms. And we start the day with the Pledge of Allegiance and some quick morning announcements. Our day ends at 2.51 uh, after period nine and our buses leave a few minutes after that. We do have um, buses that will leave uh, around 2.56, so students will go there if they need transportation. Four minutes in between each period to move about the building and move from one class to another. Now, in our schedule, we have what we call alternate day. Many schools have it, almost all schools have it in, in the secondary level. It's a blue, we call ours blue and silver, which means that on, some classes will meet every day, but some classes will only meet every other day. So on your child's schedule, you will see a blue schedule and a silver schedule. So in this child's schedule, um, on blue days, they'd start, to, they'd start the day off with physical education, and then they would go into their math ELA block from 8.30 until 10.53. Um, then they would have lunch. In the afternoon, they would go to their bundle. So health in the fall, art in the spring. Then they would head to social studies. 
their flex period, and then finish the day with science. All of our core academic classes are in periods two, three, and four, or seven, eight, and nine. So one and six are reserved for non-core academic periods. So after lunch, all of our students will go do something other than their four core academics. On Silver Day, this child would have music, and then again, they'd have their math and ELA block, except it would be double ELA. Then they would go to lunch. In the fall, they would have tech. In the spring semester, it would be family consumer science. And again, they'd have social studies and science every day in the afternoon with world language uh, replacing flex on silver days. And you know, this may seem a little confusing at first, but our children pick, on it very, pick up on it very, very quickly. And if you have any questions, we can always answer them in the fall when you get your child's schedule. Children figure it out usually within a day or two. And they also figure out how to navigate the building. So um, please, if this doesn't seem clear to you at this point, it will become very, very clear um, in September. I'd like to ask Mr. Hubbard, our assistant principal, to speak to you now about a few things, including our grades. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, so middle school is the first time that your students will be receiving letter grades as a measurement of their performance. So what we're showing you right now is the grading scale that is adopted by Herrick's school district. As you can see, we do have um, A plus A, B plus B, C plus C, D, and then F. Our grading scale does begin at the 65%. Uh, as Mr. McConaughey said, we are a very high performing academic school and we do have high standards for our students. Um, as students matriculate through the middle school, in the seventh grade, they'll have the opportunity to become members of the National Junior Honor Society if in their seventh grade year, they earn a GPA above 3.66, so an A average. And we have a good number of our students that meet that high benchmark. Now, in order to kind of keep track of grades, Mr. McConaughey, if you wanna kind of move to the next slide for me. Uh, we do ask that all of our parents sign up for the parent portal. So this is a snapshot of what a student's parent portal might look like. And this will be a way for parents to follow along with the student's homework and assignments and grades as they're being posted in the teacher's grade book. So we can get you set up with a parent portal account, which will allow you to access all of your students, all of your children in the school district's um, teachers and grades as they move through. And then at the end of the quarter, those report cards will actually be posted in the parent portal only. We no longer send home paper report cards. In addition to the parent portal, obviously this spring has been a unique experience for all of us, but our teachers, all of them this spring, have developed Google Classroom sites where they will be posting assignments for students and you'll have the opportunity to sign up for what are called guardian summaries if you haven't done that already at Searingtown this year. With the guardian summaries, it'll provide you with updated uh, information about upcoming due dates or homework assignments or things that are past due that may still be considered missing. So that'll be something to look for with your students teachers in the fall. One of the things we really try to encourage for all of our students is to get involved in extracurricular activities. We have a wide range of extracurricular activities that take place at the middle school after school. And we talk to our sixth graders at the beginning of the year about joining one or more of these clubs. Unfortunately, our sixth graders are not eligible to join athletics after school, so they will have the opportunity to join most of, oh, sorry, Mr. McConaughey, I wasn't ready to go to the next one yet. There we go. So they will have an opportunity to participate in many of these uh, activities and clubs that take place um, on various days throughout the week. So they'll have to check with the club sponsor in order to see when those clubs meet. Now this year, Howard, had I could just interrupt for one second, Mr. Hubbard. I also, um, I, I forgot to mention that, you know, students also have an opportunity for extra help. Teachers provide extra help after school. So in addition to the extra help, we have a study center that is, takes place every day after school that I think is here on this list um, that students can go to. It's just a quiet study area. Uh, but this fall, for the, this past fall, for the first time, we had a um, clubs and activities fair where we invited all of our sixth graders down to meet with the sponsors of these different clubs, 
hear about them, get information about the clubs when they meet, and um, be able to ask questions, engage what sorts of things they'd like to try out as sixth graders. Now, you, you will notice that there are some of these clubs that are available only to seventh and eighth graders, but the majority are open to all of our middle school students. As I mentioned, uh, sixth grade students are not eligible for the, the um, interscholastic athletics, but we do have an intramural program for our students that takes place from 3 to 3 p.m. to 4.25 p.m., typically in the fall and in the spring. During the winter time, we have a lot of indoor sports that are using the um, facilities during that period of the year. So we try to have the intramural activities in the fall and in the spring when the weather is permitting for us to go outside or if it's not so nice or we don't have the space outside that we can use the inside facilities as well. So that's another opportunity that we try and encourage our students to take part of in order to get some physical activity um, outside of their PE classes. And I'm gonna pass it over, I believe, to Ms. Horton to talk a little bit more about some of the activities we have for our sixth graders. Okay, parents smile. I wish I could see all your friendly faces, but I can't, thank you. I see some of you smiling now. Welcome to the middle school. We are so excited to have you. And if you want to take a deep breath in and breathe out, it's going to be okay, I promise you. I've been around for a long time here because it's such a great place and it really is a fabulous place to work with your children and we are so excited to have you. So let me tell you about some of the fantastic activities we have at HMS. I will tell you the biggest highlight of the three years is probably Frost Valley. I'm sure you've heard about it. If not, you will hear a lot about it from your child. If you've had an older child, you know all about it. Um, it is a wonderful overnight experience. Yes, overnight, two nights, not just one. Uh, we take very good care of your children. Um, and it is really an opportunity for them to work with others in a way that they wouldn't have an experience otherwise to have with their peers outdoors, in the woods. It's a lot of team building activities and it's a time and experience that children remember really for a lifetime. Other activities we have, the Bronx Zoo trip in grade six, the two dances are the Halloween Howl and the Spring Fling. There are after school dances, usually three to five, where they have pizza, snacks, and are always with a DJ, which is a lot of fun for the kids. We have a great Friday night rec program, which you'll hear more about. It's something that's offered usually once to twice a month on Friday nights from seven to nine. It's supervised um, usually by a Herrick staff member. Um, it, it's not part of Herrick, but it is a, a part of our Herrick school program and they get pizza and it's $10 usually a night. And there's lots of different games that they play. They're in the gym playing different activities. There's also um, like dance games and board games. So it's two hours really to socialize and have some recreational activity in a supervised safe environment on Friday night. And it's for sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. But the first couple months, they have exclusive sixth grade nights only for the sixth graders to get to know each other. We have a steel day in sixth grade, which is always a lot of fun in June to end our school year. And we do a number of really great community service projects. Um, our biggest project over the years has been with the Ronald McDonald House where we actually take the children to the house and they get a tour of the home and they really experience what it's like for families who have a child with an illness. And then after that experience, we do a whole readathon event where our children read, I think this year it was something over like 500,000 pages and we raise over $10,000. And every year it is about that amount. And uh, over the years we have given Ronald McDonald House close to $200,000 with this event. So it is a wonderful community service opportunity and really helps our children learn and understand have an opportunity to give back and the importance of giving back in our world today. Next slide. So social emotional learning is a huge piece of the middle school experience. And this is just a list for you of some of our biggest social emotional learning programs that we have for our students during their three years. Um, second step is a program that the guidance counselors facilitate in classrooms with our students. It is a program where they teach students about communication skills, decision-making skills, bully awareness, drug and alcohol awareness. The social workers also teach some of the lessons. 
and this is something that's taught into the seventh and I'm sorry, sixth and seventh grade classes each year. Class dismissed is an anti-bullying performance. We have a lot of assemblies noted here, offices of the law, the assistant district attorney, talk about internet safety. So important to have those conversations during these years as they become much more social on their devices. We have suicide prevention workshops in the eighth grade. We have an incredible challenge day program you'll learn more about in eighth grade. And again, community service projects every year we run a host of community service projects. Again, it's a big piece of what our middle school is all about, learning how to give back to our world. Next slide. So let me talk for a minute about developmental changes. Um, see, right now, if I was in front of you, I would say, can you raise your hand if you've had a child go through the middle school before? I like to gauge my audience. So I don't know what's out there, but physically, Children will grow anywhere between two and four inches, some a little more. And this is important to note because it's at varied rates, which causes so much self-consciousness for kids. So for example, some boys will grow two inches, three inches by the end of sixth grade. Some not till the end of eighth grade. So you can imagine how uncomfortable that is for some children when their peers are so much taller or so much shorter than they are. For girls, it's very uncomfortable to be part of a group and not only are some girls taller or shorter than them, but some of them have gotten their first menstrual cycle. Some of them are wearing bras, some not. Physically, it's an awkward age. So I make note of the physical changes because developmentally, this is all normal. So it's important for us adults to be sensitive to the physical changes that our children go through during these three years because it is very awkward for them physically. So we want to be sensitive if they're wearing baggy shirts or they're changing their style. Sometimes it's just because they want to hide themselves physically because they just don't feel okay because they feel different. And in middle school, kids tend to not want to be different. They want to tend to blend in with their peers. When you get to high school, for those of you that already have high schoolers, they all want to be different and do their own thing. But in middle school, they all kind of want to blend and no one wants to stand out. So physically, it's challenging. Socially, it's important to recognize that it's very normal for kids to want to turn to their peers more for support than you. I know right now you are probably used to your child coming home and telling you everything about their day and everything that happened in class and what happened at lunch or recess. That will stop uh, at some point during the middle school years, which is normal. Um, it is normal for their friends to change. Understand that friends do change from five to six They'll change again from six to seven, and again, sometimes from seven to eight, and that's very, very normal. So we want to be aware of the social changes and normalize them, because for some kids, it's not so easy to experience some of the social changes, because some of their friends have branched out, but they really haven't yet. And they will, but they haven't yet. So one of my most famous lines that you'll hear at every parenting talk that I give is, it's important for us to help our children learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable in life because that's how we all grow. So as children experience social changes, we have to help them muddle through the uncomfortable moments, the uncomfortable days. It will get better, but it's something that takes time. And understand when they turn to their peers and not you, it's not personal. It's not about you. But understand at some point during the middle school years, they come to uh, they come to this idea that you know nothing. As parents, around 12 or 13, we know nothing. We've experienced nothing. We couldn't possibly understand what they're going through socially, emotionally, academically. We never had cell phones. We know nothing. And I will tell you, for the first time, my oldest, who's now almost 20, told me just during this quarantine, well, you really know a lot of stuff. I said, yeah, yeah I know a couple of things. But it wasn't until this quarantine that she recognized that I knew a little something. But for the last seven years, I've known nothing. So again, that's not personal. And they turn to their friends because it is more comfortable oftentimes to talk to their peers about how they're feeling than their parents. Again, all very normal. Emotionally, they begin to push. They begin to challenge adult parameters recognize that during the middle school years, because of all the hormonal, cha hormonal changes that they're experiencing, they go from one to 100 in a matter of seconds. 
Their emotions are at a high or at a low. There's no in between with adolescents. It's either a one or a 10. But what I must forewarn you is to not react and respond at a one or a 10. Everything is not extreme. In their world, it is emotionally. But we know as adults, even though in their world it's extreme, we know in reality it's not extreme. That doesn't mean we dismiss how they feel. Of course, we respond and we listen, but it doesn't mean that we respond at a 10 where they're at. We want to help, again, them understand that their feelings are normal, healthy, and to go about talking with them in a way that helps them learn to de-escalate some of their emotions. But understand, this is all very normal for a typical adolescent. Emotionally, emotionally, they're on a wave. Academically, students in the middle school now begin to become more aware of who they are as a student, grade-wise, because now they get letter grades, they get number grades, so they have more of an idea, they become more self-aware of who they are, and they're more aware of where they are in comparison to their peers because now everyone's sharing what they're getting on grades and they talk about it more and who's making honor roll and who's not. So it's important to understand that when they talk a lot about grades and the pressure comes on that all of this is normal, what we want to help them do is learn how to balance their academic world, their extracurricular world, because in middle school, their life does become more busy because they are involved in more after school activities, typically, some in school, some outside of school, and the workload is a bit more challenging as it should be every year. So helping them learn how to balance that and, and manage the pressure is really important. And if any of you saw the student orientation that I sent to your children on Monday, I said in that video to them, and I'll say it to you, your child is not a number. Your child's not a letter. Their GPA does not define them, nor does the college that they eventually go to. What's most important to help our children understand is that effort will always bring them success. So what we want to help our children understand and learn and strive for is to always put forth their best effort, not to get a certain letter grade, and not to compare our children. As you heard, I have five, and I'm sure a number of you have two, three, and four, you're five yourself, some of them. I don't, I don't hear a lot of five parents out there. So if you're out there, come and meet me. I'd love to chat with you. But um, we don't want to compare our children because they're all different. But effort is what we want to stress with our children more than a certain grade point average or a letter grade. So those are some of the developmental changes that middle school uh, kids experience. And those are things for us to keep in mind. Next slide. So my three big pieces of advice for you. When you feel like losing it on your child, which I promise you, you will, many, many circumstances will arise. Remember, children only have half a brain. The human brain does not develop until age 25. I'm sure some of you know that already, but if you don't, that is an important piece of information to remember. The human brain does not develop until 25. So when we say to ourselves, what was she thinking? What was he thinking? Why did he do that? Why, why did he not do that? It's because they only have half a brain. So we need to cut our children some slack sometimes and realize that they have not fully developed, which is why they act very impulsively and they respond emotionally without thinking about consequences. It's all very normal for who they are developmentally at this age. Secondly, pause. I promise you, if you take two seconds when you want to react again to just pause and breathe, if you can take three breaths, that's great. But if you do just one, just one breath in a pause, I promise you, you will respond differently two seconds later so that you would have a more healthy conversation with your child to connect. Pausing is really, really helpful. That space between what you feel in a moment and what you say is so critical and can make all the difference in what happens thereafter between you and your child. And lastly, remember that life is the journey. This is their journey. And it's important as parents that we step back. I will often tell parents when they call me on their phone and they call me on the phone and they're telling me all about their child's experience and what's happening with their child socially. 
I will often say, can I please talk to your child so I can get their perspective on things and work with them because this is their situation, not yours. Up until now, we've micromanaged a lot of their life as we should have developmentally that's appropriate. It is not as appropriate during the middle school years to be so involved in micromanaging everything with them. It's really important that we let them experience their own journey and support them from behind the scenes and not be in the scene with them, so to speak, and help them learn the network of support of adults that are in their life to help them through situations. Because when they muddle through tough situations with other support, with others supporting them, they learn how to become more resilient and they learn how to manage challenges in life. And the middle school years are filled with opportunities with challenge, adversity, and resilience. So we don't want to take away those opportunities for them to grow. Next slide. So these are some parenting books that I highly recommend. And if I had to choose one, if you were gonna read one if you're interested at all in learning a little bit more about uh, adolescent life and how to successfully raise your child, um, in ways that will help them be most resilient and most successful in this world. If I had to say one, I would say my second one on here, How to Raise an Adult. Excellent, excellent book. But they're all excellent books on adolescent development. And it really will help you get a better understanding as to how to best raise your child, talk to your child, and help them learn to become the best person that they can be in this world. So keep calm, pause, take a breath. We do a lot of breathing in middle school. We do a lot of mindfulness and enjoy middle school. It is an awesome, awesome adventure and I can't wait to take it with you. All right, so I, um, I hope you know, the last 40 minutes or so have helped you to uh, learn a lot about our school and about our uh, administrative leadership team. I'm very proud to work with both Ms. Horton and Mr. Hubbard, and, and I think that together uh, our team is, is always going to be here for your children, and that's the most important thing I want you to always remember, is that no matter what happens, we're on your side, we're with you, we want what's best for the kids in this school, and uh, we're always ready to work with you to help you, um, because there will be times where we all need that little uh, assistance, that little push. So. Um, want to just give you a couple of dates to put on your calendars uh when we return fingers crossed when we return um august 24th as i mentioned will be our grade six student orientation in the morning at 10 a.m and that's the orientation which the students would have taken if they were still in searing town uh, they would have come over for a day to spend it with us um, so we are looking to move that to august 24th that's the monday um the week before school and then that same day, we would do a grade six parent meeting, connect with you, get to meet you in person and answer any questions you have that maybe uh, as you are on the edge of starting, you can, can come up with. Um, two days later, we have our annual PTA locker sale and walkthrough. Students get their schedules prior to that day and our students come in. The PTA sells all sorts of decorations for their lockers. We have lockers that are brand new. They, this is our first year, so um, we're really excited and they're in great condition. So you can decorate them as, as you like and the PTA sells some really fun stuff. And it's really a good opportunity, more importantly, for students to walk through the building, to spend some time, to go on their own. You know, we, we discourage parents from walking through with the child. We ask the child to follow their schedule, learn where their classes are so that when they do show up on September 2nd for the first day, it's not a shock and they're, they're somewhat familiar. So we have two opportunities that day. We do a 10 to two, and then we have a nighttime uh, for uh, parents who, who have to work during the day and wouldn't be able to attend. So we do a five to eight as well. And then, as I said, we start school September 2nd, fingers crossed, and uh, on September 3rd, uh, the second day of school, we have grade six back to school night. And that's an opportunity for you to meet all of your uh, child teachers and really get a feel for what it's like to be a student in our school, follow their schedule, 
and you know learn and ask questions. So um, that's really it for our presentation. We wanted to have an opportunity for you to ask some questions. So um, I do ask that you use the chat feature. Um, Mr. Hubbard will monitor that. And so if you would just type in your name and your question, Mr. Hubbard will read it and then we'll answer it as best we can. If you want to follow up, you could always um, add, it, add in at that point. But um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay. So, um, so again, any questions, please type them into the, this is where you would raise your hand and we were calling you. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that right now. And while we're waiting for some questions to go in the chat, I'll say that when your child gets a schedule and you bring them to the middle school, like Mr. McConaughey said, don't hold their hand and walk them from class to class. What I strongly suggest is that you stand a couple feet behind them, let them lead the way, let them find the classrooms. Even if they pass 101 three times, I promise you on the fourth or fifth, they'll find it. But let them experience the journey and you kind of hang behind and follow them and let them begin to feel that independence, which they will very much rise up to the occasion and enjoy and do very well with, I promise. All right, so our first question is, is there a school supply list for the sixth grade? That is being put together as we speak. And yes, that should be out probably the first week of July. So you will have the entire summer to purchase your school supplies for your child. It will be on the website. All right, are there any after school programs, for example, JCC? And if so, where do they take place? Uh, we do not host uh, the JCC or, or any after school scope type programs in our school. Um, you know, our day ends at 251 and many, 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 I would say majority of our students do stay longer to participate in a variety of activities, you know, whether it's clubs, extra help sessions, the study center. Um, as, when you get to seventh and eighth grade, we have a lot of students who play interscholastic athletics. We have the play, which will start in the fall and run through uh, our performances usually in the first weekend of February. So we have a lot of students engaged in after school activities and extra help sessions but there is not a formal program. It's really an opportunity for kids to explore different things. Um, and that's, that's really it. You know, a lot of our students are here after school because I think that makes a great experience for them to be involved in those extracurriculars. Okay, the next question was, can you explain the Guardian summary with Google Classroom? I'm gonna let Mr. Hubbard take that one. He so, knows a lot about technology, by the way. Uh, the Guardian Summary, it, the one confusion that some people have, a Guardian Summary is not access to the Google Classroom site. A Guardian Summary allows for parents to receive emails either on a daily or weekly basis, which will give you upcoming due dates that are posted in the teacher's Google Classroom site or items that are past due in the Google Classroom site. So it is a parent email notification system that goes along with Google Classroom, but it is not a full access to Google Classroom. You wouldn't see things as a participant in the classroom. It's just for information about upcoming dates or past due assignments. Uh, next question is, how late do after school clubs and activities run? Uh, they usually, clubs will usually run to around four o'clock. Some will run a little later. Uh, we do not have late buses, so you know students who stay after school will either walk home or, or they will wait to be picked up. We do supervise all of our students up until 6 p.m., but we, we, we prefer that they don't sit here is, is that late. But um, students, when they're done, uh, will go home, and usually it's around 4 or 4.30. But um, between 3 and 4, most of our clubs, our extra help sessions, our intramurals, uh, that's where they run. Is the parent portal the same as the one they've used in elementary school? Yes, yes. Uh, it, it is slightly different now because um, you now have more academic subjects that you would need to check. Um, but I, I, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hubbard, I, I believe if you signed up for an elementary school, you would have access to it in middle school. It does not change. You don't need to re-sign up for it. So if you have access currently, you would have access for the new grade starting in September. I believe that's correct. 
Um, next question is, will we send out flyers about the after school activities for parents to help kids select their, their clubs and activities? Yes, you know, we, we want that to be a child's decision, but we always encourage our children to have conversations with their parents about everything. So um, we will present in, in the fall, we'll have a, a club fair and that information will be shared with your child and we will encourage them to go home and have conversations with you. It will also be posted on our website. In addition, we also post our extra help days. Uh, they'll be in the agenda books, which all students receive in September as well. And uh, so we have it posted in a number of places. So if you ever have any confusion and you can't find that, please reach out to us and we'll direct you to where you can access it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, we want the students to make good decisions and, and they can try all sorts of different things. If they, if they go to a club and they find out this isn't for me, we encourage them to try something else. They're not married to it. The um, club brochure from this past year is still on our website. So if you were interested to see what was running this past year, you could go on the middle school website and on the left hand side in the quick links part of the website, it says HMS clubs and it has short descriptions and what the meeting times were for this past year. Um, are the clubs first come first serve or can you get into a club of your choice easily? Yeah, I mean clubs are, are designed to be opportunities for children to engage in activities they enjoy doing. So, um, you know, some of our clubs get very, very large. If that's the case, then we divide them and, and we'll do different things. Our video game club, for example, sometimes is, is very, very large and we can not accommodate everyone in one session. So what we'll then do is we'll split it in half. Some kids will come one week and some will come the next week. But the majority of our clubs, uh, we don't have an issue such as that. And we, you know, students can come and uh, you know, that's really where they get to know their teachers very well. They, they meet friends in clubs. Um, it's, it's really one of the most exciting things I think about coming to middle school is the extracurricular stuff after school. Will there be extra help during the extended lunch period as well as after school? Uh, we are working on opportunities right now for some um, academic assistance at lunch. That hasn't been finalized yet. Uh, we've been the spring has kind of thrown a little bit of a, a wrench in, in sort of getting through that, but uh, that's something we are considering and we're working towards. Um, extra help will be offered after school in all core academic subjects. Um, and we are looking for opportunities to have a, a students who can do so at lunch if they so choose. Um, but also again, that, that 22 minutes in, at the middle of the day, one of the reasons we felt so strongly that students needed it is an opportunity for them to get out, to exercise, to get some fresh air, to socialize with students who may not be in their classes. You know, a lot of times they have friends who they come from elementary school with and now they're not in classes with them. So this is a chance for them to, to socialize. But also we do think it's a good thing um, if maybe you need a little extra help or you need to meet with a teacher or you need to have a conversation with your guidance counselor where you can take advantage of those opportunities. How do we find out timing and schedule for extracurricular activities? Those will, will have a club fair as well as the posting that's on the website would tell you where it was this year. Um, we have to plan it around extra help hours for teachers. So the club sponsor plans the time for those to meet. Um, are kids allowed to carry backpacks during the day or are they allowed to carry water bottles during the day? We, we encourage backpacks uh, that are string bags and small. Um, we, we do not have uh, students carrying large backpacks around. All students now have a locker. So really what's, what's the procedure is when students arrive to school, they'll go to their locker, they'll unload their large backpack. And many of our students carry string bags or small bags around. Um, but large backpacks are discouraged and, and we don't permit them in certain areas. So we want our students to leave those big backpacks with their coats in, in the lockers. Um, and that's really what, what, what we want. But string bags are allowed. And water bottles? Water bottles absolutely are allowed. Um, I, uh, let's see, what day will they be able to put supplies in their lockers? The first time they'll be able to do that is, is during the PTA locker sale. So that would be that Wednesday, the 26th of August. And, um, you know, that's where they would walk through and uh, that's an opportunity for them to set their lockers up. So a lot of students bring in their supplies that day, um, some buy supplies from the PTA, and then they go to their locker, they set it up, and then they walk around the building. 
how early can students be dropped off at school in the morning? Uh, you know, we do not have a program in the morning, but we do have uh, staff members who are here around 7 or 7.15. So we open the library uh, at the early parts of the morning. Students are allowed in the building um, at that time, but uh, we have supervi supervisors around the building, but the classrooms will not open until a few minutes before the classes start. So if students do arrive early, we do ask them to go to the library. Um, and that's sort of how it works in the early morning hours. How do we sign up for the Guardian Summary in Google Classroom? I can take that one. Um, the Guardian Summaries are across all teachers. It's within the Google system. So if you sign up for a Guardian Summary with any of your child's teachers, if you say, can you please add me as a Guardian, then the, that will carry across all of the subject areas. So you only have to be added once. And we will also start using with our sixth grade class, we did it this year, grade level Google Classrooms where the entire grade will be in one classroom together so we can send information to students. So um, we can also, I can help you uh, add your name to a Guardian Summary for your student next year once they're in our sixth grade classroom if you haven't already signed up for it through their classes or this spring at Searingtown. Um, in terms of supplies, is it possible to minimize the number of binders? Could some subjects share a binder? And Ms. Horton, I think that, that comes from the teachers, you know. Yeah, each teacher usually requires, um, each of the four, five subject areas usually requires a binder of some sort uh, because we have teaming this year. Um, there may be an opportunity to share, but keep in mind they have lockers. So the expectation is, and what's typical, is for students to visit their locker at least four times a day in between classes. So they'll go to their locker in the morning, they'll get their periods one and two books. After period two, they'll go back to their locker, put those back, grab their period three and four books. So they go to their locker, again, at least four times a day to exchange books. So having a number of um, binders is not something that they would be expected to carry around all day long. That would never be the case. Uh, is this recorded to listen to again? I did actually set a recorder on this. I don't know what it's gonna look like, so we'll see how it turns out and whether or not I like the way I look in it. And then we'll see if we post it after that. Uh, how is Gemini transitioned to the middle school? Is there an additional science class on the child's schedule? Uh, our Gemini students who were in the Gemini program in elementary school, when they transition to middle school, have a Gemini science program in sixth grade and currently in seventh grade. Um, so that Gemini students are, uh, we have a Gemini class on three of our four teams. Um, so there are three Gemini classes in seven, in sixth grade science and in seventh grade science. That is the uh, extension of Gemini that comes from the elementary school. What subjects can students get help in after school? Uh, all of our academic subjects have extra help where teachers have weekly extra help sessions and you know, students, we, we stagger them so that students can go to the ones they need to go to without conflict. So we will post that schedule on our website and it's in our uh, agenda book. So students and parents will know when uh, they can go to extra help with their teachers. Uh, how do you know if your child qualifies for bus service to the middle school? Our bus radius for the middle school is 1.5 miles. Um, you would contact the transportation department um, and they would be able to let you know if you fell within the, the bus radius or not. Um, over the summer, you would receive bus information from our transportation department. Um, so that's really kind of how that information is disseminated. But if you have any questions, you could always call transportation. How do the kids have, or I'm sorry, do the kids have scheduled guidance counselor visits? So the guidance counselors have scheduled visits into the classrooms. Again, they facilitate lessons with that second step program I mentioned earlier. However, students at any time can make an appointment to meet with their guidance counselor. You as a parent can call the guidance counselor and request that they speak with your child. And there are some students that see our guidance counselors regularly. 
for a variety of reasons. They are a tremendous support to our school, in addition to our two social workers and two psychologists. And I can tell you that student service office is a revolving door. There are students in and out every period and they're in there for all sorts of things. And they are people that your children can turn to to ask questions and talk to for any reason, whether it be something related to school or not. So they don't have scheduled appointments with every child. They have appointments with students as needed and certainly that's something you request at any time. All right, how is bullying managed in the middle school? You know, we, we, we actually promote positive behaviors throughout our, our school. You know, our community, as I said, is based upon respect and treating one another the way we'd want to be treated. So, um, you know, we educate children about how we should be treating one another when there are uh, incidents of, of behaviors that we think are inappropriate and that we think um, uh, are targeting another child, we, we deal with them in, in regards to our disciplinary process. So um, both Ms. Horton and Mr. Hubbard are involved in that first step. Uh, we'd have conversations with the child, we would assess the situation, have communications with the parents about what we've learned, and if necessary, consequences would be administered. Um, but you know, we look at behavior as something that we want to teach and we're, we're not here to punish, we're here to teach and to help children learn from their mistakes. So, but when, when children misbehave, we have conversations and there are consequences when necessary. So we, we do not tolerate behaviors where other children are mistreated. So, um, you know, that is something that I think our school is, is very um, strongly opposed to. And I think, I think we do a very good job of supporting the kids who, who feel as if they're not they're not comfortable or if, if, if a child's making them feel uncomfortable, we have those conversations, we intervene and take the steps necessary to stop that behavior. And if I could just add to that for a moment, um, you know, during the middle school years, again, they're working with half a brain, they're impulsive and children make a lot of poor decisions. And part of learning to become a more responsible person is learning from those poor decisions. And as Mr. Ha uh, Mr. McConaughey said, as situations arise, we do, speak with children, um, we investigate situations, and we really look at discipline as an opportunity to help children learn how to make better decisions moving forward. And of course, when disciplinary action is needed, we, we go forth with that. But again, it, we really look at helping children learn from their mistakes and learn how to make better decisions overall. Um, there were a couple more questions about the guardian summaries. So in order to sign up for the guardian summaries, you would just reach out to one of your students' teachers who has a Google Classroom and is using it, um, and it would just take one teacher to add you as a guardian for your student, and you would get a verification email that gets sent to you saying, I verify I am the guardian of this child, and you would accept that invitation. Um, once we get the sixth grade class, uh, Google's Classroom set up, you can always reach out to me as well, and I'll be able to add you as a guardian if you know, you're unable to get it done with one of the teachers that the, your student has. But most of our teachers, all of our teachers are using Google Classroom now. So it's something that we shouldn't have a, an issue with in the fall at all. Um, bus schedule information, I believe Mr. McConaughey said you'd have to reach out to transportation. Or it, and, and it, it will be sent out over the summer, but if you have a question as to whether or not you are eligible and you, you don't want to wait till to find out over the summer, you can call transportation to find out. So question was, could a student stay after school until 6 p.m. and there will be staff around in the building? You know, we, are, we, we have monitors who, who are at the front door from uh, after school until 6 p.m. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't encourage that to be a place where students um, stay, but if necessary, we do have supervision through six o'clock. When do they find out which team they are on? It will be on your schedule or your child's schedule when they receive it in August. So about a week or so before school, um, prior to the locker sale, you will receive your child's schedule. And uh, on that, it will tell you what team your child is part of. And then uh, the last question I see here says, how and when does the honor program begin? I am not clear if that's the National Junior Honor Society, but if you're speaking about National Junior Honor Society, um, that begins 
in the eighth grade. So students qualify for National Junior Honor Society based on their seventh grade grades, their grades in seventh grade. And then in eighth grade is when they are uh, full members of the National Junior Honor Society. Right. What we, what we measure is um, we use the first, second, and third quarter grades from seventh grade. And the induction is at the end of eighth grade, at the end of seventh grade, so that they start with the Honor Society in eighth grade. In addition, students who don't qualify in seventh grade for the Honor Society, maybe they didn't meet the average that was required, they can, uh, again, get in, admitted in eighth grade, at the end of eighth grade as well. So another question about the Gemini program. So does it, do they have an additional science class that means something else would be taken out of their schedule? No, no. There is, science in sixth and seventh grade is one period a day. All students, whether they're in Gemini science or um, the traditional sixth or seventh grade science class have it for one period a day. In eighth grade, all of our students have a period and a half of science. So they have a double period every day in eighth grade. And that's regardless of whether you take science eight, which is space and earth, um, space and earth science, or whether you take the regents level earth science class. So all eighth graders have a double period every other day. All sixth and seventh graders in science have one period a day, regardless of whether it's Gemini or not. All right, so uh, another question about the Guardian email summaries. Yes, you could email your current teacher if your sixth grade or your fifth grade teacher is using Google Classroom. You could ask them to add you as a Guardian uh, right now to their Google Classroom site. I cannot speak for sure whether that would carry over to the fall. I would imagine it would, but I'm not entirely 100% certain on that. Um, cell phones, what's our cell phone policy? Okay, so cell phones. Um, this year we had a new policy and, and it worked actually very well. We were, were pleased to see the changes that we saw in our, in our students' behaviors regarding phones. Uh, we allow cell phones to be used during their lunch periods only. So students are expected to put their phones away. Uh, we encourage them to lock them in their lockers. Um, if they keep them in their bags, they need to be shut off and be put into their back, uh, into their bags or pockets. We do not want phones to be out. And the only time when they can use them is during their lunch period. Um, we feel as if that was an opportunity for them to check things, to connect, to speak to their parents if necessary. Um, we do not encourage students to stay on their phones for the entire duration of their lunch period. We, we want them to socialize with one another. And we think the opportunities that now exist with recess will help that um, and have our students out there exercising, participating in activities at lunch that will sort of diminish some of the activities on the phone. But they are allowed to use them during lunch periods only. They're expected to be away all other parts of the day. And again, we highly encourage them to be locked in their lockers. When does school start? Maybe time and date, but they didn't specify. Okay, so, so school starts for us on in September 2nd, if, that's, if we're looking at the date. Time is, is 7.45 in the morning. Our, our bell rings, the late bell rings at 7.45. So students have to be in their classes, their first period classes at 7.45. We do not have a homeroom. Uh, first period is a little bit longer than the other periods because we do announcements at the very beginning of first period. And uh, school ends at 2.51. So we go from 7.45 to 2.51. Uh, the question about honors program was a, uh, in reference to accelerated math and science programs. When does that begin? Accelerated math starts in seventh grade. Um, we do not have accelerated math in sixth grade. And in seventh grade, we have math seven and math seven advanced. So at the end of sixth grade, um, students will be uh, placed in, in the track that we think is appropriate for them to continue. Um, math seven advanced students would proceed into algebra in eighth grade math seven students would proceed into pre-algebra in eighth grade. So sixth grade, everyone's together and there's two tracks starting in seventh. One goes math seven advanced into algebra and one goes from math seven into pre-algebra. We no longer, I saw something pop up about the double accelerated. We no longer offer ge geometry in the middle school to eighth graders. Um, geometry is a high school class only starting next year. Uh, this was the last year we had uh, double accelerated math. And in science, um, you know, Gemini is, is not an accelerated math program. Gemini is an extension of uh, an elementary school program. Our, our uh, I guess, accelerated math would be 
in eighth grade when students have um, two tracks they can take. One is science eight and one is regents level earth science. So if students are in advanced math and science in eighth grade, they will be in two regents level classes. They will take the earth science regents and they will take the algebra regions. All right, if my child doesn't qualify for bus service, is there any alternatives? Um, the, the, you know, it's students, some students walk, um, some students get dropped off. You may have heard stories, unfortunately, about some of the drop offs, but we've gotten way better at it. Mr. Hubbard is a tremendous traffic cop. Um, <laughs> he wears rain gear when it's raining and he swings his arm and we have gotten very, uh, very much better at, at getting parents and students to facilitate the drop off. So, um, but really it's, you know, the bus is only for students who live more than a certain distance from the school. Um, and other than that, you know, the, the primary means our students take to school, either they walk or they get dropped off. I mean, carpooling is always a great option if parents have to work early. Um, you know, that's, that's something I know a lot of our students do. They, they coordinate and parents work together to get children to school through carpools. And I think this will be our last question for the night is, is the outdoor recess still in the courtyard by the cafeteria or are they allowed on the field? It, it will be for both. Um, you know, on good weather days, uh, we want them to use the fields. Our courtyard is, um, it's a great place to socialize and it's a great place to have conversations and, and to, there's tables in there. Uh, our PTA actually very uh, generously donated five new tables for our courtyard. But as a space to run around, that is not a space to run around. So we want to give the opportunity on the outside fields for our students to go out there and, and to run and to play and to get some exercise and some fresh air. And um, so that's really where most of our students would go um, is onto the backfield. All right. Oh, there was one more question about parent-teacher conferences in the middle school. Um, in the past, we have had parent-teacher conferences only for sixth grade. And um, the way our sixth grade schedule currently is, and the way it's different than what it will be next year. Right now, um, we have our teachers teach, uh, if you teach math, you teach social studies as well. And then you have an ELA teacher. So all sixth grade teachers now have two teachers who teach those three core subjects. And those two teachers would have parent-teacher conference hours. And now that we've transitioned to a teaming model, uh, you would have four teachers that would work with a child and uh, on that team. So, you know, we have not um, made a determination yet on what conferencing would look like. But one of the benefits of teaming is that team meetings will be available for parents um, to have conversations. So, we can arrange for conversations where parents speak to all four core academic teachers. Um, and that's, that's an opportunity to have those conferences when necessary. But um, we don't have formal conferences in seventh and eighth. And in sixth, because the model has changed, we're going to need to look at you know, what's, what's possible in the, in the 2021 school year. All right, we had one more question. Is sixth grader required to submit a physical exam at the beginning of the semester, as well as immunization records? All, all a child's medical records transfer from the elementary school. There are certain things that students need to do as they enter sixth grade. I will be sending home a letter uh, in the next two weeks uh, with information about what we need from you in terms of your child's medical history. Um, immunization records and, and vaccines and so forth. I will send that out in the next few weeks um, and that is required for our students. Sixth grade has certain requirements, seventh grade has additional requirements um, and those are state mandated and um, I will share those with you in a letter probably right after school ends. All right well it looks like that's the end. Thank you very much. Well we want to thank all of you. Um, I know this has been a very uh, strange and, and complicated spring for us all. And I know 
Your children have shown great resiliency. I've spoken with Ms. With Ms. DiGiorgio often about how proud she is of the Syrian County community and how the students have really risen to the occasion. And uh, she also has said great things about this class. So we're incredibly excited to welcome you. Um, I wish we had already met you, but we will be even more excited in August when we actually get to see you in person. And so we're around. Um, please email uh, us, ask questions. If anything comes up, we're here all summer and we will be getting ready for your arrival. So thank you so much for your time this evening and we look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Take care.